Hey, welcome back to another NetCast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 235. Quantrix Laboratory Special Guest, Steve Bailey. How to generate a unique list of items based off of criteria. So, Steve is a Quantrix master. One day I hope to grow up and be like Steve. So, he joins me uh, live from uh, Florida, and I'm grateful to have him on the podcast today. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you two different ways, at least two different ways, on how to generate a unique list of items based off of criteria. So we have here a basic model that has a matrix, and it has a set of key values like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it has uh, some values associated with those keys. So in key 1, uh, there's blue and red. And in, say, key three, there is blue, red, blue, green, and blue. And what we want to do is we want to be able to put in a key, and then we want to bring back a unique list. So we want to remove any of the duplicates that are associated with each one of the keys. So Steve's going to show us how to do this one way, and then we're going to pop it on over to me, and I'll show you how to do it another way. Rich, thanks for letting me uh, join your podcast here today. Um, it's been a long time. We've talked about this for about 18 months and finally our schedules have aligned such that we could do this. Um, I just want to go through the, the concepts of lists. I've been playing with lists of late and found them to be a pretty powerful uh, concept within Quantrix Modeler. And so I wanted to show you some, some tricks I've come up with to, to help with uh, using these lists in ways that may not uh, you thought of. The objective I've got here is trying to create a unique list as a result of some using some selects. In this case is I want to uh, pass this information and say to a data link so that I can qualify in more than just one, one thing. So in this case, maybe I have a data link and I want to qualify on all my products that are red, blue, and green, as uh, I have here, but I don't want to keep repeating the blue three times uh, and have you know, five different criteria. So the way I'm going to kind of break this down is the first thing I'm going to do is uh, write a, a select statement just so that I can see what is going to come back from that. Now, this is a bit like a cooking show in that I've got over here, and that's why I keep looking to my right, I've actually got the finished loaf of bread over here, so I don't want to take the time to type all these, but I'll go ahead and show you what's going on. So if I look at this, this is your very basic select statement that uh, uses, uh, let me get this guy out of here for a sec, yeah, so it uses my, my list here, my key and value matrix table, and it brings back a list of values where my key list, in this case key, is equal to my model settings key selection. So I've got a little matrix over here called model settings where I just simply put a value in here. So if I put a two in there, I get a different list. If I put four, I get a different list and so forth. So the three is the one I want to use because it brings back the uh, five different items that match that key of three. So now I've got this long list. So I just wanted to show you that. I get a very basic select statement using the join function with a comma so that I can see what the individual components are. You could see this as well using the dependency inspector but I want to keep it shown up there. So the way I kind of broke the problem down is I wanted to build uh, another uh, uh, select that told me how many of each color I have in my, uh, my select statement. So one of the things I did was I, as very typical, I have attribute matrices where for a particular category, in this case colors, uh, I have a list of potential attributes that would be associated with it. And just to kind of close the loop here, uh, best practice for creating a uh, drop downs, of course, is to constrain the input to a list of categories, in this case, color. So typically I have a category attribute matrix uh, in my models for every category. So well, now that I've done that, I want to I want to count how many times these values appear in the uh, in the, my select statement. Um, maybe you're aware, maybe you're not aware, but you do not have to use just select or sum of select. You can wrap the select statement with other functions. For example, I'm using the count if function here. So I'm basically going through and I'm selecting again my list of values. 
uh, where my key list is equal to my model setting key. So this is the exact same select that I wrote in this uh, formula where I wrapped it with a join function. I, this time I've wrapped it with a count if function. So um, basically says that in this select statement, I have three blues, one red, and one green. And in fact, that uh, is the case. I have three of each. So with that count statement, now I'm kind of set up to do what I want to do, and that is come through and give myself a list, a unique list, using that count information that I've created. So let me rearrange my window here a little bit. And with that, I'm going to use the uh, select greater than version of select. Again, another, another, uh, another one of those uh, powerful select statements. And now with that select, uh, select greater than, I was able to examine my uh, count item I'd created on my attribute. So I kind of wanted to coin a new phrase as a result of this. I'm calling this a flying attribute. So it's a dynamic attribute of the colors category. And using the select greater than, where the, where the values are greater than zero, I end up with my red, green, and blue, my three unique values in there. Now you're saying to yourself, well, see, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. How can I make this uh, more elegant or at least not requiring uh, additional matrices and additional formulas? So I'm gonna consolidate that and that's what this formula is gonna be. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna consolidate that formulas together. And this is a good modeling technique as well is to uh, break down the computation into pieces in kind of a workspace or something. And then once you have the pieces worked out, then you can go ahead and put them together into a single formula. Now, uh, if you, you also wanna be cognizant of the fact of who might be using your model and trying to understand what you've built here, uh, try not to get too, too over the top because it may be hard for them to understand your model. Not everybody would have this level of uh, Quantrix formula writing capabilities. But with the addition of some commenting, so I've identified my value list, I broke out between these two dash lines, uh, that account if formula that I've created, which actually forms my key. And then I've uh, shown the lookup value here. So using the, the, the pieces I broke apart, I was able to come to a single answer right there. And now if I was to do a data link, I could reserve, uh, uh, reference this uh, item with, uh, with an expression within my SQL tab of my data link, and therefore I would have just the three values versus all five passing through. Now there's a new feature within Quantrix that uh, can make this life easier too if you needed to create a sub list, if you will, or a sub uh, a subcategory. Uh, again, I'm trying to, I guess I'm kind of formulating some new te terminology here. Um, so what I decided to do is I went ahead and let me get this formula copied over here. I went ahead and again, created with uh, a flying attribute, which is very simply, uh, a, an if then statement where if the count is greater than one, then go ahead and put the item name in this here, this uh, item here. Now, the reason why I want to do that is I wanted to create uh, a, a dynamic category and I needed a range of values. So this is uh, sets up so I can do that. And so if I go ahead and bring in this, what I'm calling the uh, color sublist attributes, I have a dynamic category here, and if I right click and go to configure, generate items, you'll see that I am referring to the colors attributes item list, which I created over here. And because items can't be duplicates and items can't be blank, Quantrix uh, functionality here basically eliminated uh, the blank as one of my possible items. And if I have a list that has multiple items in it, if I had a range, it would clean it up for me as well to create a set of unique items within a category. So that's the two ways I went about it. Um, and then of course, uh, just kind of finishing up the thing, I went ahead and built a nice little canvas. And um, within, when we go in here, I can change this to two and I get my, my dynamic building lists over here. So that's, uh, that's what I did. 
Well, that was great, Steve. I want you showed us how to do. Now I want to demonstrate how I would do this in Quantrix Modeler. So again, I have this matrix. It's got uh, keys and it's got values. And based off of some input that I put in here or in a different matrix, I want to be able to get back a unique list of these, these values or these colors in this instance, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call, I'm just going to put three in here for my input and I'll rename this input. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go out and simply create a little helper column. And I'm just going to call this helper1, for the lack of a better term. And then I want to simply write an if statement that says if this key is equal to this value, right, give me the value here of that color. Otherwise, give me nothing. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another helper column, and we'll call it helper2. Isn't that awesome how Quantrix just calls it helper2 for me? And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a count a, uh, and I'm going to do a select. And with that select, I'm going to say, well, my value list is really helper1 values first to helper1 values this. So that's my lookup key, or that's my value list. My key list is going to be helper helper one dot values. It's going to be the same. Values first to helper one dot values. Let me spell it right. Values this. And what is going to be my lookup my lookup value is going to be the helper one that I'm on. So when I do this, I close out my count. Uh, you can see that the first instance of each one of these occurrences is actually a one. So I've already got blue listed here. So this is count number two. This is count number one of blue. And this is count number three. So what I want to do is I only want to bring back the ones. So then uh, over here, I know that this is input, but let me also put my result. I would say in this, I'll call this result equal to join. I'm going to join and I'm going to do a select. What do I want to select? I want to select the helper. What is my key list that I want to look at this? And I want where it is equal to one. And my join is going to be separated by a comma. And when I do that, you can see that I get red, green, and blue if I were to change this to one. I would expect to see blue and red. It is working beautifully just as we had expect. And again, I did that using some basic recursion within Quantrix where I'm going and I'm just saying, go ahead and count as you go down from the first cell to the one that I'm on. Anyway, that's how you do it. That's two different ways. I appreciate Steve for helping me out. You got any last words here, Steve? No, this is great. I I'd actually never have used the uh, recursion inside the key approach. So I learned something new as well. Nice job. And I I will learn something from you as soon as I learn how you did that last formula you did where you joined them all together. That was absolutely fantastic. So Thank I'll you. be I'll be pondering that one in my heart. So uh, we I'm so happy to have Steve with me. He's a great asset to the Quantrix community. And if you have any questions about Quantrix, I hope that of course you'll reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail dot com. And if I can't answer your question, then maybe Steve Bailey can, and I'll ping him. We hope that you'll join us again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Thank you. Goodbye.